Welcome. We have arrived now at the fourth question of the Summa Theologia. We're going through the attributes of God, and this is the second attribute, and it is his perfection. And since we're very early on in the Summa, I just want to remind you that it's really helpful if you start at the beginning, okay? So if you're just watching this one, this is the first one you've seen, go back and watch the previous three so that you can really understand the foundation that St. Thomas Aquinas is laying in the very order way that he writes the Summa. So for example, this is uh, talking about God's perfection, okay, his second attribute. We talked about simplicity before, and when you think about God's perfection, you should immediately think of the fourth proof for the existence of God, was, which was based on degrees of perfection. Remember, this is one of the ways that St. Thomas Aquinas proves the existence of God is that we naturally have a sense of perfection of things in the world that we experience. And he said kind of at the top of the pecking order is going to be God. And so this attribute of God very much connects to that as well. Also, if you go back to the first question of the Summa on sacred doctrine, our final end is what sacred doctrine is telling us about. And of course, our final end, as I mentioned back then, is God himself. It is our beatitude. And we know that now that God is perfect. And remember in scripture, it says that we must be perfect to enter into the kingdom of God. So that's what uh, much of the Summa is going to be about is our own perfection through a life of virtue, and most importantly, the theological virtues which unite us to God directly. But getting a little bit ahead of myself, but let's move on. This is a short question. There's only three articles, okay, as opposed to some that we've had that have been eight or ten articles. This one's pretty brief. And the first one says whether God is perfect. And you can probably predict what he's going to say about this, that yes, of course, God is perfect. This is his second attribute. And uh, this is interesting how it ties into simplicity. Remember I said that simplicity is the foundational attribute of God, and all the other ones are going to kind of refer back to his simplicity. So uh, get this. He says the first active principle must needs be most actual and therefore most perfect. For a thing is perfect in proportion to its state of actuality because we call that perfect which lacks nothing in the mode of its perfection. This makes a lot of sense because remember God's simplicity had to do with him as I mentioned at the beginning of the last video in his being a pure act of being and that means no potentiality nothing happens to God he isn't moved he isn't affected he doesn't change at all and think about it none of us are perfect there's no creature that's perfect and that's why we have to move that's why we change and they were, they were we're always in a state of trying to get to some degree of higher perfection right otherwise we would just stay still and so this perfection is also going to tie into another attribute which is immutability and so when we get to that you would think that god is doesn't change because why would he change if he's perfect, right? So the perfect uh, perfection and the immutability are going to go together. All right, so that's Article 1. Article 2 says whether the perfections of all things are in God. This is really, really important because I've mentioned before that the Summa Theologia, when you understand it properly, is going to make you see the world differently. Okay, that's the biggest effect it had on me. Nothing is the same once you get this into your mindset. All right, so he says, and I'm reading from Article 2 here, all created perfections are in God. Okay, I'm just going to read that again. All created perfections are in God. Hence, he is spoken of as universally perfect because he lacks not any excellence which may be found in any genus. All right. That is amazing. Okay. So what this means as we go about in our world, in our life, and we see the perfect sunset or the perfect butterfly. I happen to be a big fan of snakes. Just an hour ago, I saw this picture of a snake on Facebook, and it was just like the most beautiful snake I've seen. Well, I immediately say, well, there's some degree of perfection in this <laughs> snake, and so that pre-exists in God, right? So you name it, whatever you enjoy, whatever you love in the natural world is 
preexistent in God. All right, so he gives a couple reasons here. Whatever perfection exists in an effect must be found in the effective cause. All right, God is the effective cause of things. The perfections of all things must preexist in God in a more eminent way. Secondly, from God's existence. Remember, God is existence. He exists, but he is existence itself, and he is subsistent, and he must contain within himself the whole perfection of being. Now, I want to stop there because many, many days from now, okay, so, so God contains in himself the fullness of being. Many lessons from now, we're going to talk about human epistemology, the way we come to know things. And one of the things that Thomas is going to say is that we have the potential for universal being in our knowledge. Okay, it's, it's really interesting. It doesn't mean we can be God. It just means that we have the capacity, being intellectual creatures, to basically know everything. And so this is also going to tie into our beatitude and what heaven is going to be like a long, long, long time from now. So stay tuned for that. But, but again, make the connections because it's all connected, everything here in the Summa. But the key here on this article is that all the goodness, all the perfections that we experience here on earth pre-exist in God. So everything that we experience should remind us of God because it pre-exists in him. And also the correlation between being and goodness. Okay, those, those things which exist are good, right? So again, very, very good correlation. All right, finally, Article 3, whether any creature can be like God. Okay, so we are attracted to creatures, whether they be inanimate creatures or human creatures or our, our spouse or our, you know, our kids. We, we have attractions and we, there's just a lot of good things out there, right? So Thomas says, since likeness is based upon agreement or communication in form, it varies according to the many modes of communication in form. All right, there's going to be a hierarchy of being. Nobody would say that a slug or a grasshopper or an earthworm is as noble or as awesome as, say, a human being. And if we could see angels, we'd say it's even, even higher than that, right? So there, there is a clear hierarchy of being within the creatures that we see in the world. And uh, Thomas would say certainly that God is at the very top. So what does that mean? As we go up this hierarchy of being, it's leading somewhere. It's leading us to a knowledge of what is at the top, and of course, that is God. The effect must in some way resemble the form of the agent, but in different ways. And finally, he says at the end of this article, in this way, all created things, so far as they are beings, are like God as the first and universal principle of all being, all right? without exception, okay, the, the lowest of the creatures, the slug or the amoeba or what have you, like God in some way. We'll talk more about this in a future video, but that um, should give you a better understanding of the relationship between God and the created world. And if you can start to make these connections, I promise you, you will never see the world the same again. Now, tomorrow in the next video, we are going to take a little pause because instead of going straight into the third attribute of God, which is God's goodness, okay, God is good all the time, all the time God is good, he's going to put another question in that I think you're going to find very interesting. I won't tell you exactly what it is now, but I promise you, you will find it fascinating. I certainly do, and I hope you'll come back tomorrow. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. God bless you.